Two weeks of exhilarating tennis has led to this. Sunday's Australian Open final for the men's side, featuring Swiss superstar Stanislas Wawrinka in his first Grand Slam final against established future Hall of Famer and one of the greatest tennis players to ever play this game, Spaniard Rafael Nadal. You are listening to James M. Krizner on Real Still Sports. This is actually, in my opinion, going to be one of the more interesting Grand Slam finals in recent memory. It's going to be tough to watch because you know it's going to be on early in the morning and I'm not staying up till 3.30 to watch the men's final. <laughs> yeah, I would only do it if Andy Roddick was playing, and that's kind of push it still. But you know, you've got two guys that couldn't be more different. You've got Nadal, who's won, I can't tell, he's won, what, 13 majors now? All the way from tying Pete with Sampras with 14. He's the greatest clay court player ever of all time, there's no doubt about that. He's been so successful on every service he's played on, and he's looking to become the first man to win every Grand Slam twice in the open era. That's pretty impressive. First of all, Varenka, who's never been in a Grand Slam final before, lost a couple of semis, but never made that next step until this tournament, and he's looked very impressive taking out Burdich and taking out Djokovic in convincing fashion. What I'm really looking forward to is what Valfrinka does differently. That Federer did. Because Federer seemed to be pretty aggressive in the match against Nadal. Almost too aggressive and made a lot of unforced errors. But for, the, for my money... I don't think we're going to get the same kind of performance of Wawrinka. I don't think we're going to get some kind of unforced errors because Wawrinka doesn't seem to be bothered by getting his backhand worked over like Federer does. Like, Federer is not really designed to handle the Nadal barrage, but I think Wawrinka's backhand is a little more consistent. With Fetters in terms of how it can hold up. Besides, Fetters a lot younger. But Fetters a lot older, I should say. It's gonna be more interesting. Sorry, I'm just kind of looking up some stats real quick. But um, for this match, if I had to list one thing that I think each guy's gonna do well, I think Albert is gonna serve well. I do because he's been serving well the whole tournament. He's had a lot of aces, very few double falls. He's been consistent, getting a good number of serves in. But he's gonna really have to find the wide serve and the deuce and the middle serve in the ad, because he wants to get Nadal on the defensive on his backhand. Because if Nadal is on the defensive on his forehand, and has a chance to rip something, he's going to grip and rip, and it's going to be a clean win. As for Nadal, I think he's really going to have to in this match. I think he's going to have to come forward in this match, it comes to the net, because Malvarenka has been hitting with so much power from the baseline that if they go baseline, baseline, and their rallies aren't very long, because I don't think Malvarenka is going to get long rallies with Nadal, he's going to try to get out of them, and if he's on his game, Nadal's going to have to whip that forehand and come in behind it, which I think he's got a good chance, because he's a better baller than people give him credit for, and he's vastly proven that over his career, but I think that's something he's going to have to do well. But one thing that I think each player is going to struggle with and I think it's going, to be the, it's going to be each other's forehands. I think Nadal's forehand, with the spin on it and the fact that he can curve it and things, is going to give Wawrinka some trouble because of the fact that he can do the banana shots, like where he goes up around and around, like like outside the doubles alley and then curves back in. That's just sick. The passing shots when Wawrinka comes in could potentially be a problem, even though Nadal is kind of vulnerable to players who come to the net. And, um,. For, for Nadal, the sheer pace and torque that Wawrinka is getting on his forehand, and he's hitting it with more torque and more, you know, velocity than Federer is. It's hitting harder, more consistently than Federer. So I think that's going to be something different for him because he's not faced a forehand like that. 
I mean, Dimitrov's forehand was pretty, pretty close, but not even, not really. How should I put this? It's not really in the same breadth. It's not as consistent. Besides, well, Rick is a top tenner, and Dimitrov's outside the top 20, so they're just going to show you the difference. The one thing that Bob Brink is going to have to overcome in this match, it is going to be a big problem, is the fact that he's never beaten Nadal. The fact that in 12 previous meetings, Nadal has never, ever dropped a set to Bob Brink. That's the problem. Is it? And if you look at the matches, they've played on all surfaces, except grass. If you look at on clay, it's actually Nadal's beaten very consistently every time on clay, including last year in the quarters of the French not even giving up more than six games. But on hard courts, those matches have been close, each one featuring a set that at least went 6-4, except for the first one, which is actually in Australia in 2007, won by Nadal 2-2-2. Two, two, two. But then again, that doesn't really count. That was way back then. In this match, if we were to break it down shot by shot, I would have to say Wawrinka's well, serve is better. The fact that he gets better, he doesn't get the same percentage Nadal does in, but it's bigger and it's more consistently bigger than Nadal himself. The that, that blisters bothered Nadal. Didn't bother him as much as I thought it would against Federer, but still. Forehand, push. Nadal's defense and Wawrinka's well, offense, who are you going to pick? Force, irresistible force, or immovable object? Backhand, I'm definitely going to give an extra to Wawrinka because Nadal is pretty good on defense, but Wawrinka has been hitting it cleanly and he get the slice, and he actually think his slice is, has just as much bite on it as anybody else in the games, including Fetters, so he'll be able to really keep it low and give Nadal some trouble. The net game, I'm going to give an edge to Wawrinka because of the fact he's coming forward more and will do it more often. But the movement, you have to give the edge to Rafa. You have to. He's arguably one of the two or three greatest movers of all time. So it's going to be really, really tough. My final analysis is though I'm going to pick Dow to win because of the intangibles. I'd love to see Valbrenko win. I'd love to see him win his first Grand Slam and to get another major for that for Switzerland, which is a great country now. It's becoming a better tennis country with Valbrenko coming up and Federer still being one of the top dogs in the game. It doesn't matter. I still think Nadal wins this. I think Vavrinka will take a set, his first ever against Nadal, but my, 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 my thing, my dad, who is an incredibly intelligent tennis person, said it best. If the moment, if, if Vavrinka can prove that he can handle the moment, then he can possibly take Nadal out, but if not, then Nadal is going to beat him easily. And I think Vavrinka is going to handle it well, I just think that Nadal handles it better. I mean, come on, Nadal has been in how many Grand Slam finals before? And how many times will bring up in one? There you go. It's the correlation need. It's kind of funny because all the success Vavrink has had in his career getting as high as number 8 in the world, he's only got 5 career titles. And you figure he'd have more. But anyway, it's going to be interesting to see how each player shapes up. I personally think that Nadal will win it in four sets, maybe possibly five while Rinka's playing well, but we're not going to see. I don't know if we'll see five. I think Nadal, I think Nadal will take the first set. I think Wawrinka will take the second because I think Wawrinka will kick, sink his teeth in. I think it'll be a close third set and then Nadal will roll on the fourth. That's how I see it. Close first three sets, Wawrinka, Nadal takes two of the three, and then he rolls in the fourth. One thing each player is going to have to, one X factor for each player. Wawrinka gets his first serve percentage. If he's getting a good number of first serves in, keeping Nadal off track, he can win this match. He can. But if he's throwing in 54, 55% of his first serves, and Nadal's getting a chance at a second, it's not going to be pretty. For Nadal, it's the exact opposite. No way. No, actually, you know what? I'm, that's a really dumb argument. I'm thinking of something else entirely. That's my mistake. For Nadal, it's his court coverage. And his blister. If a blister in his hand affects his serve and slows down, Alvarez is going to crush it. But that leads into court coverage. If the down can get enough balls back, the frustrate of Alvarez. Because think about it. You know, I guess you could say that Djokovic, you know, Burdich is near as good mover to Dow. He's even on the hard court. But Djokovic, I think, is the greatest mover on hard court in this generation. 
And he was able to stay patient. He was able to stay steady. But dealing with the torque of the Nadal forehand is really going to be something to deal with. But the final analysis I'm picking the Nadal, picking the down for. I think he holds on. I think he wins his 14th major. I didn't want him to. I wanted to see Federer do it. It's, not, it's just not a big Nadal fan. I like Federer and, you know, two other players. But, you know, he deserves it. So he's going to get number 14. I hope everyone enjoyed that. And I will be reviewing after the finals. I might do a Pro Bowl show doing a review, review of it. But stay tuned because it's entirely this week. I'll be doing my Super Bowl previews and breakdowns. So stay tuned and I hope you enjoy it. Take care, everybody.